All right, people, welcome back. More card review. So it's about time I got to this monster. Yes, uh, I've been actually keeping up with the anime Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5. Uh, actually, <laughs> at those, while I was re done recording and rendering, I was actually going to ep watch episode 107. But uh, yeah, I've been keeping up, and we finally got the last dragon. We, of course, got Arai's Pendulum Dragon. We got our Dark Rebellion Xyz Dragon. We got our Clear Wing Synchro Dragon. And then we've always been wondering, all right, what's it? Something, something Fusion Dragon, right? And then it finally got revealed that it's, okay, it's Star Venom. But then... He didn't play it in the show for like forever. Uh, I think similar to uh, Crystal Meth, uh, we actually got the real card before we actually got the anime of, uh, card. I think it was like maybe like a week early, but uh, yeah, well, same thing with Crystal Meth. But it says we finally got it, so we now have all four dragons. So um, you know, is this card that strong? Is Star Venom Fusion Dragon really that strong? A uh, little bit of spoiler. It's not really a spoiler, but in the intro, the the fifth intro, they have. Uh, Yuri, which is the fusion guy, and then they have Yugo, which is the fusion guy. Fusion guy? No, he's not the fusion guy. He's a synchro guy. His name is <laughs> the fusion guy. No, he's a synchro guy. And it's Star Venom versus Crystal Meth, and it was just like, I was always wondering, I was like, how strong is Star Venom to go against Crystal Meth? Because you guys already know, Crystal Meth is a strong-ass fucking card. So, let's go ahead and see if this card can actually stack up to his strength and, uh, you know, is it worth fusion summoning? Because, of course, you know, with fusion summoning, you need that poly, unless, of course, unless it's contact fusion, but you need that poly, and that's a neg on top of your negging, so usually, you know, synchro, two cards generally sync into one. That's a neg one. All right. XC, two cards into one. That's a neg one. But fusion, that's two cards generally, plus a poly, so that's three cards into one. So hopefully, you know, it's worth your bang, it's worth your buck. So this is Star Venom Fusion Dragon. Finally, I can get into viewing this uh, card, stop with the introduction. So, Dark, Dragon, Fusion, Effect Monster, level 8. Alright, so, Odd Eyes is level 7, then Dark Ben is, of course, rank 4. Uh, Clear Wing is level 7, but Chris Mess is level 8, and then this being level 8. Alright. 2800 attack, 2000 defense. 2800 attack, that's fine. It's over your type, there is plenty, and 2000, that's nothing to scoff at, you know, for a booty, but you're not concerned kind of about booty. Made with two non token dark monsters on the field. Okay. Okay, so I guess they really wanted to specify that if the Dark Monsters are on the field, they can't be tokens. You know, that'd be great if you could just activate, like, a, you know, Fires of Doomsday, bang, two tokens fused, but nope, non tokens. Dark Monsters have to be Dark Monsters on the field. It's really specific, especially on the field. That kind of hurt. You know, uh, one of the great things about the fusion mechanic over, you know, the, the generally the XC or the, the synchro mechanic is that, you know, the materials don't have to be in your field. Generally, you need a tuner and a non on the field. You need two monsters with the same level on the field. You know, but this, no, if I get a poly and I'm just like, all right, well, I'll poly. I'll use these two cards in my hand and summon a monster, you know? I mean, I'm still neg on resources, but I at least don't, generally don't need the monster on the field. Star so Venom's like, I need them darks on the field, man. I need them darks. They have to be on the field. So that hurts the, the card a little bit, but hopefully the effect will be worth it. So, uh, let's get started. But this card is Fusion Summon. All right. You can... Make this card gain attack equal to the attack of one special summon monster your opponent controls until the end of this turn. That's actually pretty good, you know? Uh, you just go ahead and uh, gain their attack. It's kind of like a little bit of that uh, that, that uh, Dark Rebellion. It's kind of like, hey, give me your attack. So instead of just like, hey, I'm going to have your attack and I'm going to gain the half. It's like, I'm not going to cut you in half, but I'm going to gain what you are. So, you know, if your opponent has like a special summon blue eyes on the field, you bust this out. I'm gaining that 3,000. I'm going up to 58 this turn. That's, that's that's pretty powerful, you know. At least just till the end of the turn, you know. Unlike Rebellion, where it's like, I'm keeping this attack. I'm always going to have it. But this only takes it for uh, the remainder of the turn. If this card uh, is fusion summon. So, even if you like, if it dies and you revive it, you know, you won't get that effect. So, not, not a terrible fact. You always get something for fusion summoning it properly. All right, next effect. Once per turn. You could target one level five or higher monster opponent controls until the end of this turn. This card's name becomes that monster and replaces this effect with that monster's original effect. That's that's pretty powerful. That's pretty powerful. So you know, there's a handful of the, you know level fives or higher that you would love to just go ahead and just give me your give me your name, give me your effect to the end of the turn. Is that okay? You know, sure. You got that. You you used Ignister. You spun something back. Oh, that's cute. All right. Well, let me go ahead and summon my Star Venom. Star Venom. Go ahead and copy Ignister. I'm not Ignister. I have Ignister effect. Let me go ahead and crack your skill and spin back your shit. So, you know, that, that's pretty powerful. So, I was talking about, you know, in the intro, this card fighting against Chrysomet. 
Um, of course, if this card is summoned and it tries to activate its effect, and Chris Smith has an easy effect, of course, Chris Smith's going to be like, negate, you're dead, and I'm going to gain your attack to in turn. But no, if Chris Smith already used its effect and you summon this, you can just be like, all right, well, I'm going to not only am I going to gain your attack, you know, because I'm going to go ahead and target special monster and gain an attack, but also I'm going to go ahead and take your name and your effect until the end of the turn. So, and then when I attack you, and then you try to be like, oh, well, you know, I'm Chris, I'm Crystal Meth. I gain an attack from a low five or higher uh, battle. You're going to be like, no, negate, you're dead. Field is changed, redeclare. Hit you uh, uh, directly for that 58 if if it's available. So I can, I can see that. I can see that. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty good. But this card is not done. It has one more effect. If this fusion summon card is destroyed, all right, so that's a little bit of situational. It has to be fusion summon, so it's not like, all right, I'm revived to a call the haunted, you know, because uh, you could easily do it. This card could be in the graveyard. Your opponent, I have, you know, I've set call the haunted, UMST, and I chain summon. It's destroyed. I could do this effect. No, and it's a very important effect. It's this fusion summon card, so it has to be fusion summon. It's destroyed. Either by battle or by card effect, you destroy all special summon monsters your opponent controls. That's pretty power. That is pretty power because you're probably going to get over uh, use a special summon monster to deal with this. And then if you destroy it by battle by card effect, whether it's just Dora Geki or you know you know tack over it, you destroy all special monsters your opponent controls. It's pretty powerful. At least it's not removed from the field. At least it's not that you know. So it's like so if you castell it, no effect. One on one, of course, no effect. You're now an XC material, but uh, yeah, yeah, that, that's actually a pretty good effect. So um, there's a particular card that's actually banned in the TCG. And, uh, you know, there's a ton of things that are hurting uh, the fact that it could come back. Uh, some people say that, you know, it could come back. You know, the deck that was mainly abusing it, you know, is gone. So it could come back, and there's others that say absolutely no. I think this actual card actually hurts uh, one of its arguments. And the card I'm talking about is actually Super Poly. Uh, OCG has Super Poly at one. We had it at one for, I think, one list, and then we banned it. So, and this is back when Shadal's in a prime, because of course Shadal monster plus any type, so I just go ahead and fuse my Shadal monster with uh, your whatever attribute, and bam, you know, here's my uh, Shadal monster super power. And of course, you can't activate anything in response, so awesome. Uh, this card would pretty much be in that boat, you know? Two non-token dark monsters on the field? On the field, period? You know, think of the shenanigans you, shenanigans you could do if support super poly wasn't bad. Alright, summon uh, a burning abyss. That's fine. Special summon a burning abyss. All right, on response to your special summon of that Burning Abyss, see, I know you would love to go into that, Dante, but you got two darks. So I'm going to go ahead and super poly your two darks for my Star Venom. <laughs> Look at that. Ah, ah, you know? That's really powerful. Oh, you got you got two dark destroyers on the field? Super poly those two dark destroyers into my Star Venom. You know, it just it definitely would hurt uh, super poly's argument for coming back. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. We haven't really talked much about the card super poly since uh, Shadal's. Uh, left their prime, you know, construct is banned. We haven't seen much of Shadal. So, you know, I can see arguments for both sides, but I mean this just hurts it. You know, it's just like, you know, there's a there's a lot of predominant dark, especially in today's meta, there's darks. And, you know, you can easily just go ahead and just super poly your opponent's shit. You can just two dark monsters on the field. Uh, that of course non tokens, then you know, I could definitely hurt, you know, you have like an uh, Erebus and you summon uh, you know, an Eidos super poly, you know, it's just like mm, yeah. So yeah. But no, this card's actually pretty good. It's pretty good. I don't like that the monsters have to be on the field because I would love to just go ahead and just, you know, uh, poly in my hand. But I guess that would make it a little bit too flexible, too generic. Because just any dark monsters, any dark monsters, I, I can just, you know, poly a fucking Armageddon Knight and Bell. You know, just, yeah, any two dark monsters. So, yeah, they wanted to make it a little bit more difficult to get out. Dark monsters have to be on the field. They can't be tokens. So you can't just do fire versus doomsday or anything, any other dark uh, tokens. And, uh, yeah, but what you get is actually pretty good, pretty good. So, uh, there we go. We finally got to, uh, Star Venom Fusion Dragon, and, uh, uh I'm wondering, uh, along with all the other, uh, you know, uh, monsters that we've seen so far, you know, we've, uh, you know, we've seen Clear Wing go up to, you know, uh, Crystal Meth, so that's an upgrade. Uh, we were just recently, we saw, a little bit of spoiler, but we saw uh, Dark Rebellion go up to Dark Requiem. I'm wondering if, you know, Star Venom is going to do anything. You know, Star Venom Fusion Dragon to Starve Acid fucking Epidemic, Starve Epidemic vi Fusion Dragon. I don't know, but, uh, you know, if we ever get that card, if it ever happens in the anime and we ever get in, of course I'll be in the car doing the card review on it. So I'm just curious, because this card, this card's plenty strong enough. This card is strong enough by itself to uh, par with the strengths of Crystal Meth and uh, Dark Requiem. So to get an upgrade on top of this, that'd be interesting. 
So, tell me what you guys think about Star Venom Fusion Dragon in the comment section below. And what do you think Super Poly can go off ban? You know, go ahead and tell me what you guys think Super Poly can go on ban. Is it because you, you can fuse with your opponent shit, or because your opponent can't activate anything in response? I mean, you know, there's a lot of things, so I want to hear your opinion on that too. So, I hope that you guys enjoyed this card review. Thanks for watching, thanks for the support, and I will be back on Wednesday to look at another card. Alright, people, thanks for watching.